my full day Kyoto adventure as a tourist. Navigating different types of trains. Wandering its streets by foot. And of course, exploring Kyoto's best from historical sites to traditional streets. Now, I'm no expert or local, but join me as I navigate this beautiful city and perhaps you will find some valuable insights along the way. My name is Fat Zail, aka Zail Grayson, a wannabe video editor. Well, better said as aspiring self taught video editor. Experimenting with new techniques while I share my life's adventures. So, thank you for choosing this video and being part of my journey. Now, sit back and relax and enjoy the video. Here's some places that we're gonna explore in Kyoto and as you can see majority of it is on the right side of the map but before that a quick trip to Osaka where I start my day. This was part of my Osaka trip with my wife so we are here in Osaka Umeda station to take the Hankyu railway. First we go to the Hankyu Tourist Center to collect my tickets which is the Hankyu Tourist Pass. I got it on clue and then simply collect the tickets a day before my Kyoto trip. Now we are at the station, the Semi Express and Limited Express. Do take the Limited Express as it skips a lot of the middle stations. According to Google, it will take around 44 minutes from Osaka to Kyoto. But realistically, I will say it is around 50 to 55 minutes. If you have extra in budget, you can take the Shikansen, the bullet train. And it will only take around 15 minutes to reach Kyoto. Anyways, Hankyu Railway do accept Japan's transport cards like Suica, Pasmo and so on. But the Hankyu Tourist Pass is cheaper. It costs just as much as a one-way trip to Kyoto. Furthermore, during weekends you can catch the Kyo Train Karaku. I didn't get the opportunity to experience this, so I can't comment much on it. Also a quick shout out to guide to Kyoto.com. They really helped me with my navigation and planning of my Kyoto trip. Well, that's all for Osaka now, we go to Kyoto. Where we start at our first stop, on the west of Kyoto, Arashiyama Bamboo Forest. The famous Bamboo Alley, one of Kyoto's most photographed sites, hence the crowd. You can get no crowds if you come late or early. Anyways, we came from Osaka Umeda Station on the Hankyu Kyoto Line then change at Kasura Station to the Arashiyama Line and stop at the Arashiyama Station. From here, we make our way by foot cause a bus will take some time to reach and after an hour mostly seated, we want to move and explore. We went on a wrong way here, visited the Tenryuji Temple cause I thought we could cut through like a shortcut but you have to buy a ticket to do so. We circle back and go by what Google says and got to the entrance of Arashiyama Bamboo Forest. Also got a quick bite, some muscat grapes. And on the left of this frame here is the Tenryuji Temple. So if you go for that shortcut, do note that you will be in the middle of the bamboo grove. And yes, it basically has two parts and if you ask me, it's okay to skip the first part. Now we're in the second part where we get the best view of the bamboo forest aka the bamboo alley. A tip for your memorable photo taking, use a wide lens and position your body to kind of hide the crowd. Now if you know about shutter speed and whatnot, bring a tripod and you can do great photography with the crowd as a background subject. But for me, I didn't have time to do all that. So we move. We end the stop with a visit at Ogura Pond. To get this view, then we make our way to the Saga Areshiyama train station for our next stop. It's my first time seeing a train track on the road and I'm in awe seeing the barrier goes down and the train actually passing by. I got to cross the road as well. <laughs> then we got our second quick bite, this time at Family Mart, just a couple of buns. We eat while we walk and finish up at the station. Our next train will be the JR West Conventional Line, specifically on the Sun In Line. We will ride from this stop to Kyoto Station, then transfer to the Nara Line which will take us to our stop at Inari Station. And yeah, we use our Suica card on iPhone for payment. Anyways, our second stop, Fushimi Inari Taisha. Now 
Located right outside Inari Station, you don't need to worry about directions and simply make your way in. On the south of Kyoto, Fushimi Shrine known for its thousands of vermilion tori gates that leads you through the forest of Mount Inari. The full hike spans 4 kilometers long and will take around 2 to 3 hours to complete. So going in, we knew that we won't be completing the full hike. Similar to Arashiyama Bamboo Forest, to avoid crowds, it's either you visit early or late. And both are open 24 hours too. For the hike itself, from my research, it seems to be doable even if you're not in the best shape, like myself. But it's just long. Also, photo spots are everywhere. And for my personal tip, it's the same as before. But for this stop, patience is the key. As the crowd seems to be in groups, even though they are not part of a tour group, a crowd will travel in waves. So be patient, pick the spot, and wait a bit. And while you're here, and still here, so why not show your support by subscribing to the channel? Appreciate it. Now majority of the crowd will reach at this point, and make their way back down. But me and my wife have yet to get a good couple photo. So we decide to hike a bit more, to see if there's any good spots for us and found one just put up after our way back down we checked out the shops and got ourselves a third quick bike well not that quick we didn't finish right there for this one we just snack it along the way later on now to the next stop we take the Keihan Main Line from Fushimi Inari Station to Kiyomizu Gojo Station. From here on, it's all on foot, from one stop to another, till the end of the day. At Kyoto Kawaramachi Hankyu Station, our next stop, Kiyomizu Dera Temple. The walk from Kiyomizu Gojo Station took only around 20 minutes, but it's a slow, increasing, steep, long walk, so it can be quite challenging. Nonetheless, you will be greeted by the sight of the Vermilion Lekert Neomon Gate. Walk up the stairs, and there stands the 31 meter tall, 3 storey high pagoda. Even from our walk from the station, we could see it, making it one of the tallest pagodas in all of Japan, a symbolic feature of the temple. And not to forget the temple's main hall stage as well. To enter the area, there's an entrance fee. Purchase your tickets here and make your way in just after the counters. But not for us, as we decided not to purchase and enter. At least not on this visit. Because of time and also the crowd. Main reason why a lot of this footage are not mine. Nonetheless, we will visit it next time. Anyways, we explored the areas on the grounds and saw this view. You get the pagoda and the Neomon gate and the city of Kyoto in the background. A great view indeed. Now we are on the streets of Kyoto. This historical stone paved street are lined with traditional Japanese buildings, shops, cafes and inns. And of course, it's super crowded. Anyway, back about shops. Our next stop, Ghibli Studios Shop. Unfortunately, they were working on a lot of the displays during our visit. But we got to shop nonetheless. If you are a fan, this shop is a little heaven. Also, we checked out another Ghibli Studio shop down the road, where I took picture here. For next stop, I didn't get any footage, but it's the Sanenzaka Path. I really wish I got some footage, but apparently no. I did took a picture after the path though, after I missed to record anything. Anyways, next, Ninenzaka Steps. This I made sure to film, and of course, picture. I made sure the crowd moved away before I got this. Here's a real one. There's no possible way to avoid the crowd here, unless you come early in the morning. For the scenery though, I would say these two paths is a must when you're in Kyoto. With crowd or no crowd. And especially during cherry blossoms. 
Anyway, just right after the slope, the first tatami floor Starbucks. This unique Starbucks store is designed to blend seamlessly with the traditional Japanese architecture of the area, making the shop appear modest, so you might even pass by it if you are not on a lookout. Well, enough of the exterior, let's explore the interior. Once you enter, there's the first counter for purchasing, then followed by a room for a typical dining. Then there's a second counter at the back of the store to collect your orders. Now let's head upstairs. On this side, which is the back of the store, there's rooms on an elevated tatami floor, low tables and cushions known as zabuton, not the beef but cushions. For us to experience our Starbucks in a traditional Japanese style. Now we go to the front side, a more conventional area with tables and chairs or armchairs. This space have the window side of the building with a view on the shopping street, the passerby, and the traditional roof tiles of the surrounding buildings. Especially with that circle window, a perfect photo spot. Anyway, we got to go. Oh yeah, as for the menu, you will find the same drinks and desserts as in any other Starbucks in Japan, at the same prices as well. This Starbucks Kyoto is mostly unique for its design, blending the modern comforts with the timeless decor of Japanese tradition. Next stop, Hokanji Temple, also known as Yasaka Pagoda, for its iconic 5-tier roofs, 46-meter tall pagoda. Its towering height with serene surroundings and views from the streets makes it a must-visit for travelers exploring Kyoto. There's lots of photo spots to capture this iconic structure, with this one being the most popular just by Ninenzaka Steps, which is super crowded when we visited. Nonetheless, we got a photo right in front of it, my tip for this, go to the surrounding streets leading up to the pagoda and pick your spots. Anyways, it's getting dark, so next. Well, not a stop, Nene no Michi. Hopefully I didn't butch at that. A historical street also known as the Philosopher's Path. The path follows a canal line with cherry trees, making it very popular during the cherry blossom season. A peaceful stroll with Japan's nature. Now we embrace a Gion treasure, the Yasaka Jinja, also known as Yasaka Shrine. This is the south gate featuring the stone tori, and this is actually the main gate for the shrine. Minami Romon Tower Gate, which leads to the main area with the dance stage in the middle, where various festivals are held throughout the year in front of the main hall. With hundreds of lanterns get lit at night, this is best to visit towards the end of your Kyoto adventure. And with that, we go to the shrine's most iconic and photogenic spot, Nishi Romon Gate. Standing at the east end of Shijo Street, as you make your exit, you will face the street that runs through the center of Kyoto, making it one of the most prominent streets in the city. Especially during this golden hour, with the gate framing the street view, nice. Anyway, we are very hungry and ready to have our dinner, our first proper meal for the day. So off to Hankyu Kyoto Kawaramachi Station. And yes, this is only the second time using the Hankyu Tourist Pass, but it's still cheaper. Ride the Hankyu Railway back to Osaka Umeda, then I took the Osaka Metro back to where I stayed for the trip. In Dotobori, freshen up and of course, dinner time. Osaka Panga, a halal wagyu yakiniku restaurant with mouth-watering Japanese wagyu beef grilled to perfection. Well, by ourselves that is. So that's it for my Kyoto trip, next Osaka. Real quick though, for my next Kyoto trip, it's gonna be more than one day. Anyways, do check out my USJ video. In that video, I share my full day experience with early entry and express passes. Well, Sadako came out. Come on Stingman, go, go. Speaking of Sadako, it's Halloween Horror Nights as well. Wait, wait. Oh. Where was I? Oh, oh, my Osaka trip. It's been in the editing room a bit too long now. Hopefully, it will be done soon. And if you have big luggage and wants to know how to travel to and from KIX Airport, do check out this video. Alright, that's all for now. Do leave a like, share and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Bye for now.